Let's check out the concept of solubility, which I'm pretty sure you are already familiarized with, but let's just check it more from a mass transfer perspective. Solubility is the property of either a solid, liquid, or gas chemical substance, which will be called from now on the solute, to dissolve in another solid, liquid, or gas, which will be dissolving. Uh, we typically tend to say that the solute is the one which is in smaller amount versus the one which is in greater amount, such as the solvent. For instance, salt and water, you will say that water is the solvent and salt is the solute. They will dissolve in order to form a solution. Okay, it's very important to have those concepts, solute, solvent, solution. So this is the solution, solution which is essentially the solute and the solvent. Please note that you can have uh, many solutes in one solvent, but typically you will have a single solvent, okay? The solubility of a substance fundamentally depends on many things, but the most common ones that we are going to be analyzing, number one, the temperature, uh, depending on whether the solvent is a gas or a liquid, or a solid is a gas, liquid, or solid, temperature will either increase the solubility or decrease it. Pressure will be the same, typically reversed. And the presence of other chemicals, for instance, if you have hydrogen, the pH will change. But not only that, when you add other chemicals, polar, non-polar, they will exert forces between each other, pretty similar to real gases, they will have deviations and the physical and chemical properties of such solids and solvents. Now we're going to be talking about saturation. The extent of the solubility of a substance in a specific solvent is measured as the saturation concentration, where adding more solute does not necessarily increases the concentration of the solution and begins to precipitate due to the excess amount of solute. So let's say that we have water, Let's say we have 100 milliliters, and let's say that we are in the correct temperature. So this is 100 grams of water. If we add salt, let's say 20 grams, that will be fine, we can mix it. But let's say we add 80 grams. Well, eventually what you will see is that no more solid will dissolve and you will have a precipitate. This concept, the exact amount of the let's say maximum concentration, is called saturation concentration. This is a very important aspect to consider because you want, if you're talking about solubilities, uh, you want to understand when is material is soluble and at what point it's not going to be soluble. This is true not only for the solid plus uh, water solvent, you can use this for gas, you can use this solid solid and so on. Okay, the most familiar example of solubility is a solid acting as a solute dissolved in a liquid. Okay, but in this specific lecture or in this specific course, we will assume solubility as a gas acting as a solute dissolved in a liquid, which is acting as a solvent. Sounds very crazy, right? We were talking about solids and liquids. Now we're talking about gas and liquids. Okay. The interesting part right here is that the liquid will be the solvent. Uh, okay, we have two streams. So it is very important to, to ensure that you got it right. We have a liquid which may be pure, but for the sake of this argument, let's say that liquid is the solvent and that it has X amount of our material, which will be one to 5% uh, material of interest. And we got a gas, this will be another solvent. Remember that gas and gas is also a solubility concept. So we got a solvent plus our gas of interest X. So let's say that we got gas, let it be for this sake, air, and we got X, I don't know, let it be CO2. And in the other interface or phase, this is phase one, and this is phase two. Let's say that here we have liquid, let it be water, and X, which we already know is CO2. So if we were to mix this, of course, will depend on the mass transfer coefficient, 
But what you will expect is that x goes from this part or this phase, phase number one, to phase number two. Okay, so technically a gas, which CO2 is still a gas, is acting as a solid because it is a solid in phase one and it is a solid in phase two. And as you can imagine, we have two solvents. We got air, which is solvent of phase one, and water, which is solvent of phase two.